very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. We have got you all the latest news and updates from the blockchain technology world. CryptoWire, a crypto super app, which also includes the channel Crypto TV, has launched India's first index of cryptocurrencies IC15. The IC15 index is aimed at helping investors track the performance of top 15 widely traded liquid cryptocurrencies listed on leading crypto exchanges across the globe. To track the IC15 index and its constituents, download the CryptoWire app from the Play Store. And now, let's take a look at the headlines. Russian finance minister says crypto shouldn't be legal currency. KB Bank to launch South Korea's first crypto investment fund. OpenSea scammers steal over 250 NFTs from 17 users. Bitcoin trades below $37,000 as Russia turns defiant over Ukraine. Crypto platform Amber Group raises $200 million, hits $3 billion valuation. Intel unveils second generation Bonanza mine chip for efficient Bitcoin mining. African Web3 super app Jumbo raises $7.5 million in seed funding. Bit2Me becomes Spain's first crypto exchange. FTX enters gaming with an eye to widen crypto use. Cryptocurrencies should not be given legal currency status and treated only as an investment vehicle, the Russian finance minister said. The recommendation is part of a draft cryptocurrency law the ministry presented to the Russian parliament recently. The finance ministry's proposal reinforces Russia's current policy of not allowing cryptocurrencies to be used as a form of payment. The bill proposes that citizens looking to purchase and hold digital assets should complete a screening process that will assess knowledge of the technology and associated investment risk. The move comes after growing concerns over conflict between Russia and Ukraine have put pressure on risk assets. Kukmin Bank, South Korea's largest bank, is preparing to become the first bank in the country to offer crypto investment products to retail investors. KB head of index quant management Hong Gun Kim announced on Monday that it had formed a digital asset management preparatory committee to determine product and strategy capabilities regarding digital assets and artificial intelligence investment funds. The bank expects to launch crypto exchange traded funds and futures products. The committee will also assess risk and compliance issues for the investment funds. The current plans are to launch a crypto investment index fund and a fund that utilizes an outsourced chief investment officer, also referred to as outsourced investment management, in order to provide guarantees on principal investments. The OCIO fund may also be used in retirement pensions. World's largest non-fungible token platform OpenSea said that a phishing attack over the weekend which did not originate on the exchange had caused losses to only 17 victims, lower than the initial reported 32 people. David Finzer, CEO and co-founder of OpenSea in a series of tweets dismissed reports of the attack being worth over $200 million and said the hacker had $1.7 million of Ether in their wallet, confirmed by Etherscan records. The hacker made off with 254 NFTs during the attack, including a few Bored Ape Yacht Club NFTs. The most NFTs stolen during the phishing attack were 37 Azukis. The users authorized the migration as instructed in the phishing email and the authorization allowed the hacker to steal the NFTs, blockchain securities firm PeckShield tweeted. Russian President Vladimir Putin turned defiant and pushed through plans to recognize the independence of two Russian bank territories in Ukraine, triggering fresh threat of an invasion. Putin, while making a case for invading Ukraine, said that the country's pro-Western government was a threat to Russia. Putin outlined the move in a speech saying any further bloodshed would be on the Ukraine government's conscience. Following Putin's speech, the Biden administration announced penalties against the breakaway Ukraine republics. Crude oil prices jumped with the per-barrel price of Brent crude oil climbing past $97, a nearly 4% spike. Bitcoin, the largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, was trading at about $36,987, down over 5% for the previous 24 hours. Ether, the second largest crypto by market cap, was off about 
4% over the same period at $2,573. Other major cryptos were also in the red. Crypto platform Amber Group said it raised $200 million led by Temasek, the Singapore-based sovereign wealth fund. The investment values Amber, which is also based in Singapore, at $3 billion and brings the total amount of capital it has raised to date to $328 million. Amber CEO Michael Wu said the firm's latest capital injection will boost hiring in Europe and the Americas to meet institutional demand in those regions. There are also plans to expand Whalefin, its consumer app that offers yield on crypto holdings and its creator-focused arm, Openverse. Alongside Temasek, existing investors including Sequoia China, Pantera Capital, Tiger Global Management, True Arrow Partners and Coinbase Ventures participated in the round. Computer chip manufacturing giant Intel Corporation has unveiled details of a new mining chip that will be coupled with a high-performance 3600-watt miner with the ultimate goal of improving Bitcoin mining efficiency. Intel revealed its second-generation BTC mining setup during the IEEE International Solid State Circuits Conference 2022, a conference dedicated to the electronics and chip manufacturing industry. According to the company, Bonanza Mine is an ultra-low-voltage, energy-efficient Bitcoin mining ASIC that can deliver 40 terahashes per second. Intel has yet to announce a date for its official launch along with the technical requirements of the second-generation mining setup. African Web3 startup Jumbo has raised $7.5 million in a seed funding round that involved notable investors from the crypto space including Delphi Ventures, Coinbase Ventures and Three Arrows Capital. Like India's Paytm and China's WeChat, African Jumbo Super App is a one-stop mobile application for multiple services such as ride-hailing, banking, communication and food delivery. According to Jumbo founder James Jang, the company aims to lead Web3 adoption in Africa. The funds raised will go into operation and testing the app, which will go live late this year. Since January, Jumbo has signed up over 12,000 students across 15 African nations to complete a Web3 curriculum through their Jumbo Academy at over 600 partners' locations across Africa, designed to allow students to explore opportunities in play-to-earn and DeFi. Bit2Me, a leading Spanish crypto exchange, has obtained approval from the Bank of Spain to be the first provider of services for the exchange of virtual currency for fiat currency and the custody of digital wallets, the company announced on Thursday. The approval will allow Bit2Me to offer Spanish banks a white-label service enabling crypto trading on their platforms. To celebrate its approval, the company is conducting an airdrop that will run through March 2. Bit2Me, headquartered in Spain, offers crypto services in more than 100 countries and recorded a trading volume of $1.25 billion in 2021. Crypto exchange FTX is launching its own gaming unit aimed at inspiring more game publishers to accept cryptocurrencies, blockchain networks and non-fungible tokens. FTX Gaming, functioning via FTX US affiliate, will debut with a crypto as a service platform through which gaming companies can launch tokens and offer support for NFTs. FTX in November had announced that it would invest $100 million together with two partners to spur integration of the Solana blockchain into video games. FTX claimed that its move into gaming was because of the large 2 billion plus base of gamers in the world who have played with and collected digital items and can now also own them. That's all in the bulletin for now. Keep watching Crypto TV.